Well, actually, we have a pretty big team, and uh, so Roger Guyette was our overall visual effects supervisor on the film, and he's also the second unit director, so he's very tied in and has worked with JJ before, and uh, so my role was to work uh, specifically with the ILM artists on uh, creating the visual effects for the film, and it was, uh, you know, I've been there for 16 years, um, so I, I've been around ILM for a while, so uh, getting to work on this film was just amazing, though, because there is so much history tied into ILM and Star Wars and how those two things kind of go together and really can't can't really be separated at this point they're so tied together so well JJ has an amazing ability to um, I think get to the heart of the the stories that matter to people so with these franchises like Star Trek and with uh, Star Wars I think it's about characters you know I, I don't want to speak for him obviously but I think he has a in my own opinion, he has a real ability to, to make the characters kind of the first and foremost, most important thing in the, in the story. And he really brings you into the world in a way that, you know, you have all these familiar elements. Um, you know, in the case of The Force Awakens, we have the characters that we know, we have the ships that we love, and, but we have all these new locations and all this, this new sort of, uh, you know, a, a new universe to explore. But he does it in such a way that it, it makes it feel familiar, yet you know, fresh and exciting. And I think that is a really uh, a hard thing to master, and I think he's really done a fantastic job. He... I think the way we approach the visual effects on this film is that we wanted people to really have an experience where they felt like they were watching sort of a sequel to those movies that they saw back in the, the 70s and 80s, you know, that they, they could have walked out of a theater having watched The Return of the Jedi, then, you know, the next day gotten up, walked back into the theater and watched The Force Awakens and felt like there was a real continuity there. And, and that was kind of our driving force behind everything is how do we make it all feel authentic you know, and part of that is using a lot of practical effects and building amazing creatures. You know, Neil Scanlon and his creature department did a fantastic job, and Chris Corbell did amazing practical effects. And that allows us to do our job more effectively by being able to put our visual effects on top of the, the amazing stuff that's on camera. You, you know, you come out with a, an end result that not only looks, you know, breathtaking to, to see, but also it feels a little bit more like the, the movies that you were used to seeing back in the day. Even though our tools are different and our techniques are different, the, the main focus on how you shoot a movie and you do as much as you can in camera, that still was you know, at the heart of... Um... Probably as a category, the hardest effect in this movie for us was really the destruction of the planet at the end. There were so many things going on in those shots. You know, we had that amazing um, lightsaber battle between Rain and um, uh, Kylo in the forest, and then that kind of culminated in, in him pressing her up against the cliff and the planet starting to collapse. And seeing into the planet, and you know, there was like a structure underneath the planet and sort of getting that in place, but having those really complex effects and having the snow and the rock and the trees and everything interact with one another. And then of course that, that last final shot of the planet exploding really took a long time to, to execute just as a, from a technical standpoint, getting a shot like that to render was, was an amazing uh, accomplishment in and of itself. But it, it just involved a lot of different departments, a lot of people and a lot of man hours to make that stuff happen. In a critical story. Yeah, and it, I think it was really nice to have a, a critical moment in the story come at a time when, you know, a lot of times the third act of a film becomes the, kind of an action bonanza, and you end up with a bunch of things happening, but nothing really significant that you walk away from it feeling like a, a catharsis of any kind. And, and I feel like in this movie, um, everything came together, and like you said, had, had a climax, and you felt like there was this, this moment where, you know, she had a revelation out there, and, and the audience had a revelation with her of, of her force powers, and, um, and then having the, you know, just the entire planetary collapse after that, I felt like it was a really great end to a, a great third act. What, I mean... I think for, you know, that one shot was particularly challenging, but there was a lot of shots in this movie that were kind of of that nature. And I don't, I wouldn't minimize any other thing. Just there were so many things where we had to think, you know, strongly about the design, the look, um, how to tie it into, to, you know, Star Wars of the past in terms of like making sure that people felt there was some familiarity there with the ships or um, the design of the shot. Like there was a lot in this movie that, that a lot of thinking went into 
to produce the result as opposed to um, there wasn't a lot of sort of a, um, I don't know how you put it, uh, kind of <clears throat> free shots in that, in that way that, you know, you might create a sequence where the shots all kind of line up and, and they have a similar feeling. A lot of these shots were sort of crafted from the ground up to be what they were. And uh, that feels really good at the end of the day because it's really creative. You know, you, you come out of this feeling like, wow, we really gave it our all and tried to make every moment of this movie matter. Um, and that's a great feeling. What kind of VFX? Well, we use a lot of proprietary software at ILM, but we also use things um, like, um, you know, Mari and uh, for painting our assets and uh, Katana for lighting and we use um, Nuke for compositing, and we use Maya for animation. So there are a lot of different uh, components that go into, kind of hook into our, our main um, software, which we use you know, for simulation, which is uh, Xeno, which is our in-house software. Um, and so our, our pipe can be a little complex in the, in the sense that we have a lot of different tools working all at once, but it all kind of centers around the fact that um, we have a lot of uh, in-house development that helps us kind of get in and out of these packages and between the different software packages kind of neatly and easily in a way that makes it kind of artist friendly. What kind of situation? I think most of the time our tools come out of, um, you know, finding that you're trying to do something and you don't have the tool in front of you that can do it as easily, effectively, or as, as quickly as you want. Um, for instance, in this case, we came up with our, um, we iterated on our, our uh, effects uh, engine because we wanted to be able to simulate multiple uh, different materials at once. A lot of times you have to create like a, like if you want to have a, a, a situation where a rock canyon opens up and collapses and you have snow on top of that, you might have to simulate the rocks uh, differently than you would the snow or use two different solvers. And a lot of the, the results of that sometimes are very, um, not very convincing because you don't feel like those two things are interacting or the scene would get so large you couldn't run that as one sim. And so we wanted to create a solver that could actually do all that together. And so that's where we worked with our effects department to come up with a custom um, sim engine that would be able to handle all that complexity of the different materials and the, the sheer size and volume of the um, effects we were creating. Sounds like a savage tool. I think we, we, tend to, we, we tend to keep our, our proprietary tools in-house because we, we feel like that's a real advantage to be able to you know, use that on the, on the next show and t carry that knowledge forward. And it, it's one of those things that um, you'd spend a lot more time sort of making it package ready than you would you know, just putting it into use immediately on the next show. So you know, they, they can be a bit funky in terms of how, of how they, they work and it isn't something that you'd just give to anyone, but at the same time they are incredibly powerful tools. So having a positive reaction to this movie was um, a, a great thing, and it wasn't a given. You know, I think that's the one thing that everyone assumes after the movie comes out and it does well that, oh, well, you must have known it was going to be great. And you don't, when you're making a, a creative thing like a film, you're never exactly sure how people are going to react to it in the end. Are they going to agree with the choices that you made to get there? And you have a good feeling, you know, we all fe felt like we had created something um, good and I know that, you know, we had faith in JJ and, and from the very get-go, but at the same time, you, you always are a bit nervous. And I think we had several moments where when we created, say, the first trailer and that first trailer went out and people saw a bit of episode seven for the first time, you know, there was a, a little bit of a sigh of relief and then the next trailer came out and a little more, but then, it, you know, at the end of the day, we had to deliver the entire movie and have it hold together, and it felt great that um, that was able to come out, and, and people viewed it as part of the Star Wars canon, and, and that's really the important thing, that people look at it as, you know, a worthy successor to the legacy of the things that we love. I hate to sound like a company man, but ILM is really one of the best places in the world to work on visual effects. So, and Star Wars being such an integral part of my, you know, uh, my childhood and being able to come and, and work on one of these films, I'm really not looking for anything uh, beyond that right now. I, I felt like uh, this was an amazing project to be a part of, and if I had the chance to do something like this again, I absolutely would grab it.